Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel for another fantasy painting tutorial. This one is titled Floating Castle. I'm going to be painting this on 11 by 14 double primed and stretched canvas. Have the following colors, some titanium white, cobalt blue, bright aqua green turquoise, magenta, and axine purple. I'll have that full list plus some brushes, the canvas I'm using below this video in the description box. And let's just go ahead and get started. So I'm going to be using uh, number 50, number 30 to 50, and my number 50 here, but you can use anything in between, the same size, uh, anything you have just to create these soft brush strokes for the background. We're going to be softening them up after with a dry mop brush anyways. Okay, so I'm just going to take a little bit of water on my brush first, some magenta, and start softly kind of crisscrossing just to get that blended and applied onto the canvas. I'm going to apply it just in sections and then I'm going to start overlapping while I introduce the next color. And I'm not going to wash my brush off in between. None of these colors are going to make any muddy tones. They're all very nice colors that go together well, so I don't have to worry about that and just a little bit more here and there so that some areas are going to be more saturated and thicker and then right into some dioxazine purple and I want you guys to know that you can use any colors that you want they don't have to be these specific colors so you can still follow along with my tutorials if you have different paints okay don't ever let that hold you back so purple into a little bit of the magenta then right into that cobalt blue and letting all those colors blend into one another without um covering up completely any one of those colors, okay? So just a little blending here and there to um, start to blend them out and blend into each other. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. I think you guys know what I mean. <laughs> um, I'm gonna grab some turquoise now and I haven't washed my brush out. I've got a number 30 actually here. I've gone down to a smaller brush, so I'm just gonna start adding a little bit of white in with that turquoise, blending it softly into a bit of that purple, blue, and the magenta. And then I'm gonna come in with a dry mop brush. This is my one inch round mop brush. Yes, it's a makeup brush. I've got a link below for those if you're uh, interested. I don't make any money off of the links that I um, supply for you guys. I just want to help you out with supplies if you're curious and wanna try these brushes out there. Awesome brushes. So just very lightly dusting over each of the colors and in between. All this does is give it more of an airbrush look and create a softer background. It gets rid of any harsh uh, brush strokes that you might have, any of those streaky looks. And I'm gonna wash that brush off and then go down to a number four filbert brush. Number four, six or eight, I think would be appropriate size for this, but you can always use whatever you feel comfortable with and whatever you have. It's, a, it's about how you apply the paint and not always about the brush that you're using. So just remember that and keep that in mind. So I'm creating all these little scoops and just adding little peaks and really making some clouds stand out and pop out. So we're adding light. So this is really gonna set off the painting and um, be the primary focus for um, where the light is coming from, okay? So we're gonna just make the clouds pop out by adding a little bit of these little half circles, little scoops, whatever you wanna call them kind of makes them look a little bit lacy. You can be as detailed as you want. Um, I like to be a little bit more free. Sometimes I like to make them look a little bit more neat and tidy, like perfect little scoops. But then I always wanna kind of just make a few look a little bit messy so that it keeps that realistic look, right? They're not always gonna be perfect. You need to have some imperfection in your paintings to make them look realistic and believable. And that's when um, I, encourage you guys to just you know let go don't try so hard don't get intimidated or frustrated you can be loose with your brush that's how you're going to actually get better as a painter is not being so tight and not holding the brush really really tight um, and you'll save yourself a lot of headaches so just loosen up um, and you know save that detail and that concentration for areas that you really will uh, need more of that and that will be for when we add our castle there's some lines that you have to follow, some shadows and, and the overall design. Um, and keep in mind that you can change up anything. You can add an, another color to your castle, extra flowers. If you have those ideas that come to you, go with them and trust them. 
Um, that's that's your kind of inner artist speaking. That's your intuitiveness, your own creativity, your sense of style that's going to make you original and stand out as an artist. So I don't mind at all if you want to follow along with me. Um, however, for selling paintings, I want to quickly mention that because I've had so many questions about people asking if they can paint my paintings and sell them. I prefer that you didn't with these intuitive fantasy paintings. These are my signature uh, paintings. I don't mind if you gift them. Um, and, uh, you know, paint them for your own enjoyment and you can decorate your house with them, but I prefer you not to make money off of, uh, my intuitive original artwork. Hope that is respected and you guys, um, understand my feelings about that. But if you're, um, unsure, I do have quite a few tutorials that I allow you to sell. So you can always send me a message through Patreon if you want uh, more info about that. But as I'm just kind of talking and chatting with you guys, answering some questions that I've been getting a lot of lately, I'm just going around, traveling around with my brush, adding more and more peaks to my clouds. Now I want to mention the paint is wet underneath. So that is why I'm picking up uh, the colors that I'm going over with my white. So I'm going over, wherever I go over, if it's still wet, I'm picking that up and that's just naturally creating softer pastel tones. I prefer to paint this way, but I know that many of you have trouble keeping up with um, the drying aspect of your acrylics because they do dry awfully fast. Now I've got a few tips for you to prevent that from happening or to slow it down. Have a fine misting spray bottle. Uh, stand back, you know, a few feet and just, or not a few feet, maybe just like a few, just stand back a little ways so you're not getting like a bunch of drips down your canvas. So just finely mist your painting and that's going to keep your paint wet. You can also uh, mist your palette as well to keep it wet and do not paint in high, high uh, heat uh, conditions. Okay. If it's really hot, it's going to dry out your paint and you're painting really fast. Um, so all those things can help. And you can also add a slow drying medium to your acrylics. If you like, uh, I just use a little bit of water. Um, if you use too much water, what's going to happen is you're going to lose the, um, saturation of your paint. You're going to lose the color. It's going to be very transparent and dull. So keep that in mind that just a little bit of water goes a long way. And just coming in here, adding a little bit of blue, a little bit of white, overlapping to make more colors. Um, and remember, all these colors look really nice together, so you can't go wrong. Um, you could possibly make some muddy tones with the magenta and the turquoise. Um, if that happens, um, just go with it because it, with all these pretty colors that we're using today for this painting, I always try to add in a little muddy tone or earth tone. <laughs> some brown tones um, and more of like olive greens here and there because that's really important. That is what you need to help balance out all the pretty colors and, and give your landscapes extra life if you wanna work with fantasy uh, or work on fantasy paintings. So, I mean, you, there's really no rules. This is just what, if you guys are watching my channel wanna learn from me, this is my thought process. This is what I like doing and how I like mixing colors. So there's really no wrong or right. You can do whatever you want. I believe there's no rules when it comes to art. Um, but if you guys are curious about why I add colors where I do, how I'm adding them, where I'm applying them, that's kind of my thought process. I always like to balance out with um, a few earth tones. So you'll see me use a lot of light olive green and a little bit of burnt sienna or just mix up my colors to make some earthy tones. So I'm coming in with a little bit of neon pink now. I've got uh, the luminous neon heavy body paints that I use by Holbein. I've also got a link for those below. Uh, they're great paints because they've got um, uh, a nice uh, light fastness. So that means that the paint is gonna stay neon for years and years, especially if you keep it out of the sun. Um, but these paints hold up really well. so. If you find those cheap, you know, uh, craft bottle neon paints, they're going to lose their neon um, luminosity effect, fluorescent effect uh, after, you know, it could be even a year, maybe less than that, depending on the conditions that you're hanging it in. But uh, these paints are beautiful, um, but there are other brands that are a little bit cheaper. You can also go with Arteza and Liquitex. They're nice paints as well. I recommend those. And I'm just going to start coming in here, adding little um, cascading waterfalls over top of those other colors underneath, and then make it kind of look like it's magical glowing water that we've got down here. So little dabs and little, um, I'm just really dotting and dabbing around kind of in a messy, free, loose way. 
um, to make it look like natural water spilling down there and, and just a little bit of soft movement in the water. Nothing too um, splashy or too, too much going on there. I just want to have this whole feeling, the whole mood of this um, feeling very relaxing and tranquil. Um, so now I'm going to bring in some of my Sap or Hooker's Green by Liquitex Basics. And I've got my Light Olive Green, same brand. Um, these are paints that I use quite often. I switch up from Arteza, um, Liquitex, and I use Golden sometimes too. Um, I'm going to be adding some Doxazine Purple and some green in here and just blobbing around making some flat kind of pancake shapes uh, with lumps on them. So I know it sounds funny, and, and uh, but that's really all you're doing. So when you look at a painting and you think there's no way I can paint that, that's way too difficult. Listen to how I'm painting and, and really honestly guys, there's nothing super um, like you don't have to be a really experienced painter. Okay, I'm letting you guys in on these little tips and hacks. Just paint little flat lumpy blobs and there you go. There's your land to build up from. You've got a nice deep dark rich green base. I like to use dioxazine purple. Sometimes I'll use black but I find that purple and like the dioxazine purple especially because it's super super dark and rich uh, makes a gorgeous uh, background or underpainting for trees and foliage and uh, roads and in this case I'm going to be using I'm going to be using this for uh, this underpainting where we're going to have the waterfalls we're going to incorporate a bridge in here um, I want to mention I'm painting this intuitively so I have nothing I'm looking at while I'm painting this and most of you that are watching know this about me and know this is my style of painting but I've always got new followers and new subscribers so uh, for those of you that are just joining me right now I have always had kind of a wild imagination I love to make up worlds and I'm a big dreamer so I have now decided in the last, well, kind of over the past year, year and a half, to start um, filming filming my process when I'm intuitively painting and making it a step-by-step -step so you guys can follow along with me because so many of you are dreamers like me and fantasy lovers. And let's face it, with everything going on in the world right now, don't we need a little bit more of this? We all kind of want to escape and um, painting is a healthy habit to do that. <laughs> there are other things you can do to escape that, you know, aren't, aren't really as, as healthier. And, but painting is really good for the soul, mind, body, spirit, all of that. It's going to make you fulfilled, happy, and you can also turn it into career if you like. So I've got a mini mop brush now. This one's an angle. It doesn't have to be an angled mop brush. This is just happens to be the first brush that I grabbed and it's dry. I'm mixing a bit of that sap green or hooker's green with some light olive green and I'm just tapping over that uh, purple and sap green that I originally the first base the first coast coat and I'm gonna add some foliage now so rich green foliage now keep in mind this is gonna dry a little bit darker so I'm gonna come back in after and add a little bit of white to those greens again and reapply for some highlights and areas that I want to stand out more by doing this, this is really going to give this a 3D uh, look to this floating world and it really sets this in the foreground and it makes it feel like it's floating uh, in this fantasy type of sky and those clouds and everything are kind of around it and behind it. So yeah, it's really going to make your um, object stand out when you do this three-step process, the dark underpainting, then adding the main color or mid-tone, and then your highlights. Um, so those three things, very, very simple, three steps. I have a lot of three-step tutorials. Uh, one that's really popular for clouds because a lot of people have trouble with clouds. And so I wanted to do that and break it down for, and that's a realistic one. But you can take that realistic tutorial for clouds and apply it to a fantasy painting. So I'll, I'll try to remember to leave a link down below for that. If I happen to forget, which sometimes I do, just leave a comment down below or a question and I'll pop it in there for you. So I've got a small flat brush I'm using now and I'm gonna mix just a little bit of the sap green, purple and a bit of white and I'm gonna start just pulling up um, different sizes of rectangles. I'm gonna make them look like the beginning stages of the castle and then give them sort of a rounded look by how I apply the paint with my brush after and these kind of scoopy um, half circle lines on the top for where I'm gonna add the tops of my castles. I think they're called turrets. <laughs> So I'm going to add them 
up, you know, kind of around the edges of the top of this floating world. I'm going to add some in between some of the trees and bushes. I'm not going to worry about those. I can always come over top and add more layer later on. Um, but this is just how I'm going to start. You can apply your castle first and then go around after with your bushes. It doesn't matter. So um, just going over with a little bit more white now. I don't want to cover up the sides. I want to leave those kind of dark. So this is going to also help make this 3D. So it's the same uh, technique as I added the land first, right? Dark underpainting, then a bit lighter and then lighter, but not completely covering up anything. So you've always got a bit of shadow for that contrast and you've got your mid-tone and your highlight your bright or your brightest color. Um, so I'm going to just go over again and again here, pulling up from the bottom, making this just a little bit longer. And I'm kind of just playing around with the paint and the brush right now. Uh, not sure how low or how tall I want this main um, part of the castle to be. And then I'm going to just kind of come in here and dab and pull little lines here and there. They could be the beginning stages of some pools for our waterfalls. They could be, you know, just little um, landing areas to walk up and to the castle, um, who knows, little little rocks here and there. All these little things will just make your, um, your fantasy land stand out a little bit more and not be so flat. So you don't have to always work really hard or take a long time to paint a rock or, um, you know, something here and there. It's just a little a little dash of paint, a little dab, a little dot, and voila, it ends up turning into something at the end of your painting. It all comes together. So with a little bit of purple here, I'm going to do that half circle that's kind of sloped, and that's going to give you the round look. And then just create, see how it kind of goes up a little bit in the center. It's a little arc, and it's very slight. So that really, really helps turn those rectangles into um, more of like a cylinder, I guess, like a round um, look of the the turrets on the castle and then just adding a little triangle on top now if you want I'm normally with my castles I make them really strong or really long and stretched out um, like and kind of skinny um, but for this one I wanted to do some shorter ones I thought this would be kind of cute and I just wanted to change it up a little bit from my usual um, type of castles that I add I'm just going to go around the edges and define them a little bit more this is going to add a little bit more uh, 3D aspect, shadow, contrast, both of those things. And you can see I added some little lines right below there. And then I'm going to add another, uh, a little bit thicker, more paint this time for that uh, half circle arch up there. And then finally, my the top of my castle. I'm going to add a little line and then I'll do a quick little wiggle out towards the left and then kind of just flick off and you'll see it'll look like a little, right here, it'll look like a little flag. Now I'm gonna go over that and add a few to the other ones as well. I'll add a little bit of color, a little bit of water, a little bit of white here and there just to change it up, but you could just leave it like this. Um, when I'm working on these intuitive paintings, I, I tend to go back and, and fiddle with things and change things as the ideas come to my mind. I don't hesitate, I just go for it and do it. So I'm trying to make this <laughs> as clear of a step-by-step -step for you guys as I can, but if you're wondering, why I'm kind of hopping all over the place. That's why it's intuitive painting and um, hope you guys can keep up and that you're learning a lot here in the process. All right, so just coming in with a little bit more purple, I'm gonna add another layer to the tops of the castles. And then I'm gonna come in and start adding some little lines, little really skinny rectangles. You could add little squares or little skinny rectangles for your windows. I'm just gonna define these lines a little bit more. I just got a, a really small uh, brush I'm using. Um, I've got a little flat brush, but you can use a round brush, liner brush, any small brush that you want. But yeah, just full on straight uh, diaxazine purple here. Um, during the process of this painting, I add some highlights to the top. So if you like the way it looks like this, you can go ahead and leave it. Doesn't really matter. I think it looks nice both ways with the dark uh, turrets on the top, the triangles, and as well as adding some highlights to them. So I'm adding, starting to come in and add more details now, those little lines, um, about a quarter of the way down the castle, and adding a few more um, little flags, and then here, just little skinny lines. Um, this might work better if you dry your painting off first. Um, but if you just have enough paint on your brush and you're not pushing too hard, you can just quickly uh, tap, dab, 
and move on to the next one like I've done here. And this looks kind of nice just the way it is, but I'm gonna um, take this to the next level by outlining um, the windows. So right here I've got some titanium, or actually I've got a little bit of purple first. <laughs> I jumped the gun a little bit. I have a little bit of purple first that I'm gonna create some arches around these windows with, and then I will be coming in with titanium white and going outside of those again just to make it look like they pop out like there's a little bit more architecture there and it gives it a, just a little bit more um i guess so just a little bit more detail overall there's a lot of different things you can do with with making your castle stand out and making them your own uh, feel free to look at different images different fantasy books and you could sketch yourself ahead of time and really make something unique, throw a bunch of ideas together. Uh, it's really fun. And, and if you have kids, they are going to love this. I used to paint murals on my kids' wall when um, I didn't have a lot of canvas. I would use whatever leftover paint we had from our home renovations and, and I would surprise the kids with murals on their wall. Um, and even if you don't have kids, I mean, my kids are all grown up and I still love fantasy. So you're never too old to enjoy a painting like this. So you can see how I've applied a bit of that white paint after I outline the windows. I pull across rather than like horizontally rather than vertically. That also helps to give it a slight uh, stone work look and, and create that round cylinder uh, shape similar to a lighthouse so you know you could paint your lighthouse uh, similar to this you would just change the top I guess and uh, I do have some lighthouse tutorials while I mention that because people are asking uh, asking that a lot lately I'm kind of just going through um, trying to answer some questions during this video too that I've been getting a lot of lately um, I've been super busy with making tutorials for my patrons sending out and creating some um, really original fantasy paintings to say thank you because I do appreciate you guys so very much. So I'm always enjoying what I'm doing though. I don't ever want you guys to think that I'm working too hard. I love what I do and I would rather spend my time um, doing painting and saying thank, taking the time to say thank you to you guys. Um, you know, because it's, it's all about enjoying what you do and giving thanks and letting you guys all know how much I appreciate you and your support on Patreon and, and wherever you watch from, if you purchase my paintings, it just makes my day. So I love finding new homes for my paintings. And this one is available. If you're wondering, I have lots of fantasy paintings for sale. You can check them out. Send me a message on Instagram, Patreon, or Facebook. And I'm adding some waterfalls in here now with that tiny little flat brush I have. Uh, phthalo blue, turquoise, a little bit of white, and just making quick little uh, drops and then adding another one right underneath, maybe coming from another direction so you can switch it up. You can just have one main one that comes down, but you can do shorter ones like this, starting from the left and then falling over to the right, and so on and so on, and you will just create the most magical uh, fantasy painting by adding these little, you know, tranquil uh, waterfalls here. I love them. I've been painting little floating worlds for many years and I used to sit at farmers markets and craft fairs and paint live and just to help pass the time really and you know I, I would have I would start to hear people talking and I turn around and realize that I had a group of people. I think I mentioned this in one of my last videos too but kind of just reminds me it takes me back to those those days of doing farmers markets and craft fairs. Now those are a lot of work especially uh, you know because they're outside. Well a lot of them are outside the farmers markets right so it's like weather um, you know you have to deal with the, the elements of the weather so sometimes it would be super hot and and uh, you'd sit there for hours and hours you know dealing with the heat and exhaustion and then packing all your work and packing it out, um, talking to many, many people uh, takes a lot out of you. So I don't do those anymore. Um, now I just do uh, painting online here and, um, and I also taught for years and years painting classes to the schools, my home, colleges and um, I'm at a point in my life where I can be in my own studio filming 
and teaching you guys and talking with you. And this is a great place to be. And I enjoyed all those years of all those stages that I was at in my career. Um, so I guess you guys can see here, I'm just starting to add a little bit more highlights with my light out of olive green, a little bit of white. You can use a really small mop brush if you have one or a filbert brush. However, I'm just using this brush to pull drop for some um, vines. So just kind of pulling down and dropping like I am with the waterfalls will give you those cascading vines. I'm also using it to tap, tap, tap for a stipple technique to create thicker 3D um, highlights on my um, bushes and my plants. So you can use one brush for a few different um, looks and brush strokes and techniques. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of white with a clean brush now. I'm going to come in and add some more details on the top. So this is what I mentioned earlier. If you want to keep your the top of your castle dark, you can. I think it looks nice both ways, but during the process of this painting, I wanted to try and add some highlights just to kind of soften it up. I never want my castles to look uh, too dark or too scary. I like a, <laughs> I like a lighter, um, whiter, brighter looking castle. It's just a little bit more... Um, fairy tale like for me I guess but uh it, it doesn't matter you can you can change it up as much as you want right and it'll still look nice so like the ones on the right they they look really cool dark like that because they they show up nicely against that light turquoise background um and I'm going to be adding some flowers in too so I'm really going to be um, having fun working on this castle for the next little bit I'll be adding a bridge and really creating a little world here that I, you know, I always envision myself there and kind of uh, picture myself there and what I would like to do being there. It might sound corny to you guys. I don't know, but this is, I want to let you guys in on my thought process, what I'm thinking. Uh, and, and I think that really helps rather than just making it really technical because Art is, yes, it is partly technical, but a lot of it is mood, emotion, um, you know, where you're at in your mind and um, how you daydream and, and what you love and what you, you know, things that you like that are around you, what plants you like, what colors you like. Um, so that all plays a role. And so I'm sharing that with you guys because I appreciate um, your love and support and and wanting me to open up a little bit more. So let me know if you guys are enjoying this tutorial, if you're learning a lot, if this is inspiring you or, you know, kind of uh, making you want to paint something that you never thought you could paint before. I appreciate the feedback and I just love hearing from you guys. So yeah, don't ever hesitate to leave a comment or question below. So I'm going to come in with a few more highlights here. I'm adding a little bit of white on each level just to make these stand out more because you know acrylic does dry darker and this is going to dry even with just straight white it will fade a little bit so I might even come over again later on and add a bit more white but we'll have to see and I'm just going to go over the the flags and make them stand out a little bit more just a quick little wiggle and then very narrow on the end So what I want to do next, and I mentioned, I'm going to be adding some flowers. Um, so as I finish up, you know, just adding a few more little flags here. I think it's cute to add these little flags. I'm going to be adding some flowers, and I'm going to take a mixture of dioxazine purple. Um, I'll be, you know, just doing purple, dioxazine purple first, and then I'm going to be incorporating some more of the pink, some blue, some white, and I'm gonna play up on um, my favorite shades for flowers. So I love the purples, blues, and pinks. Uh, I love every kind of flower. I love color, period. But um, specifically, I love, I'm, I'm really drawn to like hydrangeas and delphiniums that are at the blue and purple, and I love pink. I'm such a sucker for anything pink. <laughs> so just going around, you can choose any area you want for your flowers. I like to add a little bit here and there around the waterfalls and the base of the castle. Uh, just have everything kind of warm and welcoming and and fairy tale feeling like. So these could be any flowers you want them to be. You can just make it up as you go along. And all I'm doing is adding little dabs so I'm not concentrating on every petal or a stem. 
uh, no details like that. This is very kind of just impressionistic and you're not so close up that you would be able to possibly see all the each and every petal. So um, that's something that you need to realize when you're painting. You don't necessarily need to give 100% detail to everything in your painting. Um, yes, you can choose a few things too, especially the things that you're going to see closer up. Um, but mainly the things that are farther away and there's lots of them together, like a flower bush, you're just going to see little blobs. So it's going to be about the base coat and the main color and then the highlight. So here I'm going over and adding that bright light olive green and white highlight. Like I mentioned before when we first started, remember, I said this is going to fade and I'm probably going to have to come back. So with acrylic paint, it's very normal that you have to do this. Don't think that it's the paint you're using. It's not how you paint. You're not doing anything wrong. This is just a normal part of the process. It can help um, applying one to two coats of white gesso prior to painting, like adding that to your um, canvas. Uh, if you're using gesso, you may have to lightly sand before you begin painting. Um, some gessos and some canvas surfaces can be a little bit rougher in tooth, they call it, um, but you can um, find out more about different canvases if you uh, Google it or ask um, the person at the, the art store. There are fine tooth canvases that are really smooth and nice to paint on. Um, but sometimes with gesso, yeah, you do have to sand because it can leave it a little bit rough and then that's going to be really hard to spread your paint around. But gesso is nice um, to add to keep the bright, bright colors even brighter. It'll make it look like um, you just applied them. Um, sometimes I do. I find the canvas lately that I've been getting from Michaels in particular has been really good and I'm not getting super, super expensive um, canvas and they always have lots of sales going on. I'm finding more and more lately like the canvas is just getting better. What, whatever they're priming it with is really helping hold up the colors and I use some bright colors so in the past I noticed it would uh, I don't want to say which store I, <laughs> I was getting them from, but um, it's a popular one and the paint dries so dull and it can be disappointing. So um, if you're using really inexpensive paint or inexpensive paint and canvas, actually, it's a good idea to uh, get some gesso and apply white gesso to your canvases first. It's going to help a lot. So I'm adding more and more flowers here and there. You can see the neon pink, white. I'm going to add my bridge now, just a simple arch. I've got, I did purple first, then I've got turquoise, and I'm going to add a few little um, shadows and highlights and a little railing. So I'm adding a little post straight up and down here. And then I'm going to add a little bit of foliage on either side just to kind of tuck that in, make it look like it's, you know, in there amongst all the bushes and the trees and not just kind of floating. <laughs> That's important too. Once you've added your bridge, add a little bit of um, leaves and trees and stuff around it and then it'll just look like it's in there and the, the bushes and trees are kind of in front. And then I'm going to add a few more details, a little railing, adding a little bit of white, a little bit of um, light olive green. I like to tint my white with other colors. Um, it just makes it more interesting rather than just using straight white for every bright area or every highlight of your uh, painting. So it's really important to think about um, when you're applying your highlights that you um, try to tint them with another color. Adding some stairs in here now, just some simple lines that go off kind of diagonally towards that bridge, right? It kind of tells a story and everything kind of leads to something else. So you get off the bridge and then you go up those stairs leading up to your beautiful fantasy fairy tale castle. And, and you're just going to travel through the sky, maybe to other lands. I don't know. You guys can make up your own story. It's whatever you want it to be. I'm going to add a few little sun rays here peeking through um, behind this floating castle. So I'm going to have a little bit of white water on my brush, a little flat brush. You can use a filbert too. I, I kind of switch up from flat to filbert, though flats I do recommend for beginners because you have a straight edge to them. So you're not going to be fighting that arch that uh, the filbert brush has. So I'm going to kind of just line up where I think that light beam from behind um, the floating castle is and add a few sun rays coming down here. And they're kind of just shining down on the glowing magical pink in the water. 
I'm going to just keep working on uh, building up the strength of these sun rays. So you want to have a mixture of, of water and the color you're using. So I've just got some white here. Um, I may tint it with a little bit of yellow sometimes, but for here I've got enough color behind that I don't really need to tint it with anything, but you definitely could. So if you wanted to know what you could tint it with, I would choose like a peachy color or light yellow, um, but white is just fine here. And then down below, I'm gonna mix it with a little bit of turquoise. So a little bit of white, water, turquoise. Um, wait a few minutes or dry it off with a hair dryer to see how it dries, because when you're using more water, uh, sometimes it can just kind of disappear once it dries. So then I'm gonna hop over to the left side and I'm gonna create a little bit more mood uh, in the cloud area here with some turquoise and white again, just little scoops and wiggles. And then I'm gonna take my pink, white, a little bit of water and bring down some more waterfalls from the same um, area as the other one. And just little pulls and wiggles, dropping, flicking gently. And then I wanna start painting a uh, moon. So I'm gonna use a uh, number two round brush and I'm gonna take turquoise and white. Now I'm making a little arch or like a little crescent moon, banana shape, <laughs> that always helps my students. When you just break it down into simple shapes, right? And I pay like, I'm placing, <laughs> I'm placing my pinky on the corner of the canvas where it's dry and that really helps. It's such a huge tip. So it's hard using a small brush, right? And, and try to steady your hand. But if you just simply place your pinky uh, on the canvas. Again, you have to make sure it's dry underneath, of course, otherwise you're going to mess up your painting. That is really going to help you steady your hand. It's going to be, this process will be a lot smoother. So a little bit of white after, skinny line to outline that crescent moon, white, uh, more white than anything is really going to give that a 3, 3D effect. And then I'm going to dot and dab a bunch of little stars coming down. And I'm gonna add a little bit of sparkles to these stars with my micro mini liner brush. This is actually a nail art brush. I ordered a bunch of these online. They're not the greatest brushes, but uh, it's all I have right now. And, I'm, and I've just got a little bit of water and titanium white on the very tip of my brush. You wanna use barely any pressure at all. Just do a line up and down and then one on either side. Um, you can paint your stars however you want. This is how I do it, so that's why I'm explaining it this way. But like I mentioned before, there's really no right, right, right or wrong way of doing anything. It's just you guys are following my tutorials, so I am showing you the easiest way I know how and how I apply it to my paintings. I'm going to be adding some pink ones as well, but I'm just going to add a little bit more here to this moon, make it just a little bit thicker. The white paint keeps drying a little bit darker, so that's why I go over. Um, some areas here and I'm going to take this little liner brush to my bridge and add a highlight to those posts on my railing. I'm going to add a little bit more white above my darkest areas to make them pop out more. And I added a little bit to my windows too. I added a grid in there. Now adding that grid kind of took away from the dark contrast inside the windows. So um, I did go over later after I finished filming and I added a little bit more dioxazine purple. I'm not gonna lie. So if you guys see the end picture in this video um, where it's like the, the ending of the video and I just popped that painting up, you might notice a little difference there. So that's what I did. I wanted to come in and add a little bit more purple in there to make those windows stand out. Um, I think the grid looks kind of nice, but I would just do fewer lines in it uh, if you want to, unless you just like that faded white look and, and less purple. <laughs> Anyhow, <laughs> I'm going to use this micro mini liner brush and apply some really small little scoops overlapping here with my neon pink and my white, making them lighter than the layers that I've already got there underneath, just, just building up more uh, lights and highlights here and everything kind of softly fades into one another so it's it's kind of you know a, a lot of ombre going on light to dark and nothing too drastic so it just really it gradually blends um, and I'm gonna add some more little stars here with that bubblegum pink that light pink and white little dots and dabs and then I just kind of soften with my finger I'm gonna make it look like they're kind of like necklaces or, or pretty little chains 
of stars. So just creating these little scoops, just like I did with the clouds, same thing. And then, um, yeah, like little garlands and then little dots and dabs. I'll come in and make a few of them sparkling by adding, you know, the little dot inside and then a little line up and down and across. Um, just a bunch of these together like this. It looks so delicate and pretty. And I think this was probably one of my favorite additions to this painting. I think without it, it was kind of lacking something. I love how this brings the whole painting together. I'm curious to know what your favorite part of this painting is or was. And I look forward to hearing uh, your comments or reading your comments below this video. So pop them in there. Always love hearing from you guys. I'm just going to keep on building this little star area up here, like I mentioned, just adding a few more here and there, and then little scoops, and then little lines. I don't have a lot of water on my brush, as you can see. That helps to make it look really soft and delicate as well. Um, but I'm just going to add the last detail here, a little bit more flowers, greenery, wiggle dots and dabs with my brush. And I want to thank you guys so much for joining me today. I hope that I didn't talk your ear off, that you enjoyed listening to me chat. I just had a cup of coffee, a really strong one. So <laughs> thanks for watching everybody and I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye.